instruction is particularly uh, suited for adding computational modeling as a representation because um, it focuses on asking students to develop and use multiple representations of their conceptual model. Um, up till now, the, mul the multiple representations that they use may include graphs or diagrams or uh, words or equations. Um, computer programs are another way of representing um, change in a physical phenomenon. Uh, computational thinking is um, an alternative way of problem solving um, that can be used kind of alongside the analytical method. Um, just like in modeling instruction and in other physics classes, just how we have multiple ways of approaching different situations, computational modeling is another approach. Um, that gives you insights into problems and situations that you wouldn't have any other way. I think computational thinking provides um, a magnified or step back perspective for students to understand uh, the interrelationships um, in physics as a total, but more so just in science. The main thing we're trying to do is to help people understand that there are many representations of things in physics. Programs are one more representation. And every representation has strengths and weaknesses. Like you can bounce a ball very easily in a box. It's harder to make a ball bounce in a program. Right? You have to like, do much more work for it. But you can do things with a program, like you can record it, you can run it forever, you can change the scale over which it runs, which are things you can simply not do in a physical object. Right? You can't make your ball go slower. Right? Um, I think computational thinking can help we teach physics by letting students or training students to break down pieces of information in really granular pieces and by looking at these granular pieces of information then they can make sense of how these things fit. So for example, if I'm making some sort of model with constant velocity, I can break down well what does motion look like? What does velocity motion look like? Well velocities the displacement over time. What's displacement? Displacement is the change in position. What's position? Because it's another uh, avenue for students to have discussions about the physics. So as they're trying to uh, use the computer language to make the physics happen, and when it doesn't work, or when this thing happens or that happens, they have to discuss it amongst themselves with the teacher, figure out what's going on, and that can help them to build a better understanding. Um, I think that it's going to, I think it's going to really going to help me find misconceptions with my kids. Um, because I have a lot, they can kind of go through the steps almost robotically. They can do the lab, they can get the mathematical representation, they can make some sort of a visual representation, they can make a diagram, they can tell me what's happening, but then when you ask them to deploy, something breaks down. So I think this is going to be able to help me pinpoint, because especially looking if I have them code something and I can see their code, it will really help me pinpoint where, first where in their code, and that kind of helps with that thinking, where in their thinking are they, is it breaking down? You learn by teaching, right? Just like, you know, as a teacher, I'm always learning things because I'm trying to explain it to someone else, and I realize I don't know how to explain it, and that's what makes me go back and study it better and come back with a new explanation. Well. Programming is a way of teaching something to a thing that will not make any inferences on its own. The computer is really pretty stupid, right? So if you can figure out how to explain something to that machine, you've understood how to explain it in a level that is different from explaining to a human being. When I saw Bootstrap for the first time um, as a teacher a couple of years ago in one of their professional development experiences, I really saw a connection between the way that I taught physics and the way that they were teaching computer science. And I also saw that their ultimate goal wasn't to make everybody be computer scientists. Um, it was to help them learn algebra, uh, which is you know, a core of physics. And so for me, it just felt like a perfect marriage um, and helped me to take my own experience with success in physics and mathematics and to transfer that understanding into the computer science and vice versa. So for me, it felt like a success. Um, and I want students to feel that way, and I want teachers to feel that way. Uh, there's a certain point in the curriculum 
that I teach where students are trying to solve a problem, the classic sort of train problem of two objects are coming towards each other, two different constant velocities, and you know how far apart they start, where is the exact point where they'll collide. Um, and what I want them to do is to write and solve a system of equations or make two graphs and find their intersection. Those are the analytical solutions to the problem. Um, but we have another representation in modeling called a motion map where you just literally put a dot for every point on the number line where the object will be after certain numbers of seconds. And some kids want to actually calculate out, well, where is each buggy going to be after one second? Where is each buggy going to be after two seconds? And they keep doing that until they find how many seconds have gone by until the dots pass each other. But that general approach is computational thinking. Some kids are predisposed to do that when they first see a problem instead of going straight for the equations. Uh, and so it's very exciting that we can now legitimize that approach because rather than, if kids want to do that, rather than having to do all those calculations by hand, now they can learn to write a simulation that will do the calculations quickly. We've picked a model of computation in Pirate. Uh, we, we call it, it's an algebraic model of computation. Uh, if you think through running Pirate programs using operations like substituting a value into a function or reducing an expression, you will correctly predict the behavior of the pirate program. Of course, under the scenes, that's not exactly how a computer works, but we've built pirate to have that model of computation. And so anything that students know about algebra and functions and uh, plotting functions and the way functions act, right, actually is true of the functions they write in pirate. The goal there was to make it so teachers would write uh, physically faithful functions and all of the other code we wrote would take care of the exciting simulation and the stopping conditions and things like that that uh, are not easy to implement and let the teachers focus on the physically relevant part of the programming that they're doing. We've been working on the reactor library to make it more uh, straightforward for non-CS experts to build a simulation. We've built support libraries to make it even easier than that. Uh, we've added fairly rich graphical support, plotting support, uh, data tables so that you can get traces of your execution, uh, various graphs, and so on, um, so that you can do the kinds of digital measurements that match the physical measurements that you would take of a physical experiment. Um, I definitely, in comparison from last year, is much easier um, to follow through and the pace is much easier to keep up with and so that there isn't such a big jump between computational thinking and computer science and physics. I like it a lot. I actually do. I'm really enjoying the coding. kind of wish we would have had that when I was in high school. I've been texting teachers that I work with like, hey, I need to show you something when I get back. Um, I like it. I, I love learning, um, I, especially I love learning with smart people who have um, the same interests and the same passions that I have. Um, I like the diversity of ideas that each one brings and the expertise, the different expertises that people bring. I love it. I think it's uh, fantastically put together. And the best part is just the group of people we're working with. I think it's really important that we integrate things um, in general because we're looking for transfer, right? So we know that students have learned something when they're able to take it from one context and put it into another. So if we're able to have kids um, do things in physics and translate it into some kind of a computational environment, it suggests to us that they've learned physics, which I think is a really great thing. But beyond that, we're really interested in preparing students for um, a world in which they, the world itself is integrated. Um, there's kind of a dual purpose there. We're interested in them building their general scientific literacy, which includes computational thinking, um, and we're also trying to prepare them for the wide opportunity of careers that they might take on that includes computational thinking. I hope that we give students sort of an appreciation for the fun of physical experiments and programming, um, that we give students an appreciation for some of the nuance of it. So I think that uh, gives uh, the youth some um, uh, interest in learning uh, how to uh, do the physics so that something can happen on the screen successfully. Uh, so I think it helps student motivation. So in Bootstrap Algebra, our 
One of our goals is to change the way that algebra is taught. And so with Bootstrap Physics, I hope that this course can also change the way that physics is taught and bring in more computational modeling and bring in a notion of computer science and functional programming into a physics course so that students and teachers can see how uh, making simulations in code uh, can be just as valuable as the simulations that teachers do in class all the time already and see how functional programming can reflect the real world and physical simulations. Is what we have done is we've worked on a much better way to teach basic ideas of calculus. Right? We are teaching differential equations, but we're teaching them in a sort of very student-friendly way without a lot of the sort of heavyweight mathematics. Right? And that way of thinking about the world is foundational. You don't get a science degree without learning about differential equations, right? Because that's a foundational way of thinking about the world in terms of states and state changes, right? Physicists are really good, like a working physicist is really good about thinking about the world in terms of states and state changes. And it turns out computer scientists learned that idea from physics, right? Newton got us to think about that and then everyone else picked up on that idea. So we can change that entire pedagogy, we can change the set of subjects that we, the questions we ask inside the discipline, and we can reform the way we do calculus. That's something we can, it's conceivable we can do within the bounds of the current school system, right? Just like Bootstrap Algebra is trying to change the way we teach algebra, we're not saying overthrow the school system, come up with a new school system, we're saying you're gonna teach algebra inside a silo, that's okay, we can improve the teaching. Right? We're going to trying to improve physics. So I think the grand goal for this is that I would like to have every student who takes physics, which ideally would be all students, um, to feel physics competent and also to feel computationally competent. Um, so I would love in the long term um, for every physics teacher to see this as essential and to actually teach computational modeling. Um, and I guess the, the grand goal from that would be I would love to see more people, especially people of diversity, especially young women, um, pursuing physics degrees, including computational physics degrees, um, uh, and engineering, you know, all these related careers. But I want students to feel like they can, I want teachers to feel like they can, and in some sense that we must, that, we, that this, is, this is something that on a nationwide level we need to be doing to prepare the future.